Hey there SOLIDWORKS folks. This video will show you the basics of synchronization using two different geometries. A part file of a steering wheel and an assembly file of a wrench and bolt. We will be discussing associativity and synchronization import options. Here we have both console multiphysics open with the blank new screen and we also have SOLIDWORKS open with the wrench and bolt assembly as well as a steering wheel assembly. We'll start with the wrench and bolt. Once we have a SOLIDWORKS geometry file open, we can simply go to Comsol Multiphysics, and then through the model wizard, we'll select 3D space dimension, since we're working in 3D, and then add solid mechanics as the physics interface. Then we can click Done, and this brings us to the main Comsol Multiphysics screen. The first thing we want to do is in the Home tab in the Geometry section, click the Live Link button, and then add Live Link for SOLIDWORKS. As you can see, this node shows up below the Geometry node, and the Model Builder tree works very similarly to the Design tree in SOLIDWORKS. Now all we have to do is click Synchronize, and the wrench will appear in our graphics window. In the full simulation, a load is applied to the wrench that turns the bolt, but since the bolt is fixed, the wrench bends. The simulation found in the COMSOL application gallery analyzes the stresses and strains in the wrench and measures the deformation. The first thing we'll want to look at now is how to hide parts of the geometry in SOLIDWORKS from COMSOL Multiphysics. So in SOLIDWORKS, we can hide any components of our assembly using the Hide button. And then when we synchronize the geometry, Comsol Multiphysics only imports the components that are shown. And for the sake of this demonstration, we will show this component again and resynchronize. Now let's take a look at the idea of associativity. Essentially, associativity means that the Live Link interface keeps track of each geometric entity such as the faces, edges, and points we see here in the COMSOL graphics window, so that these are at all times connected to their corresponding entities in SOLIDWORKS. The reason for this is to assure that any physics settings we apply to the geometry remains in place even after the geometry is updated in SOLIDWORKS and synchronized again. To show you this example, we need to create some physics boundary conditions. Let's add a boundary load on the handle and we'll add a total force of negative 100 newtons in the y direction. And then we can add a boundary fixed constraint to fix the end of this bolt so that it cannot move. Now, since we have associativity on, when we go back into SOLIDWORKS and we, for instance, change the geometry, in the Tools section of the toolbar, we can open up the Equations window. And as you can see, there are some different configurations of the wrench and bolt assembly with the wrench size and thread diameter. Let's go with M12. As you can see, this is much bigger. Then when we go into Comsol Multiphysics and we click Synchronize again, the geometry has become much larger. And then when we go into the physics window, the boundary load is still attached to this other boundary and the fixed constraint is maintained as well. Note that if I had done a CAD file import to import this geometry, then followed by a re-import of the updated wrench, the selections are lost since the CAD files lack information that would make associativity possible. So let's go into SOLIDWORKS again and turn off the associativity for faces. Now, when we go back to SOLIDWORKS and change the configuration, this time I'll just use the Configurations tab here, and let's select the M6. Now when we resynchronize, the geometry again changes. However, when we go into the boundary load node, 
the selection is no longer maintained. And this is the same as you can see with the fixed constraint. And you may be thinking that associativity is great, why would I ever turn it off? Well, in almost all cases, we would of course keep it on. However, for very large geometries with thousands and thousands of entities, the processing time can become quite long and it can help to turn off associativity for the levels of entities that it is not needed for, which is usually edges and points. Now we'll take a look at the import options. First, let's get rid of this solid mechanics node and then back in SolidWorks, let's switch our active window to the steering wheel with two curves above and below. The steering wheel is plastic to be injected into a steel mold and cooled by the curved cooling tubes. We need to create a steel mold box, which can be added in Comsol Multiphysics to simulate and analyze the heat transfer properties. In Comsol Multiphysics, when we click synchronize again, the geometry will switch over to the one that's active in the SolidWorks window, the steering wheel geometry. And we can, for example, create a simulation of the cooling process if we create an additional domain that represents the mold. Now we have opened a SolidWorks part as opposed to an assembly. We can still hide things from Comsol inside of SolidWorks though. If we go into the solid bodies folder here, there is a split one and split two representing the middle of the steering wheel and the bottom of the steering wheel. Let's hide these. And now we only have the top of the steering wheel, which happens to be the geometry that's used in the actual simulation that can be found in the model gallery. Back in Comps Multiphysics, when we click synchronize, the hidden geometries disappear. We can also control the objects that are imported within Comsol Multiphysics itself. We can select to import solids, surfaces, and or curves and points. If we uncheck the curves and points box and click synchronize, the curves that were created before are now gone. And at this point, I'd like to just take a second to point out that in SOLIDWORKS, the curves that will show up are not simply just curves that were drawn in sketches. They actually have to be created as composite curves, which can be seen in the insert and then curve. So they're either composite curves, curves through XYZ points, curve through reference points, or helix slash spiral. These are the types of curves that can be synchronized with COMSOL. Since sketches aren't actual geometries, they won't be synchronized. The other import options involve checking imported objects for errors, repairing those imported objects, and removing redundant edges and vertices. The top option is already checked so that Comsol Multiphysics will actually check for any errors that might occur when transferring the geometry over. It will not, however, repair the geometry or remove redundant edges or vertices by default since this may break associativity. Finally, let's take a look at adding geometry to the geometry that has been imported. In SOLIDWORKS, the design has been drawn using a unit system, which we can see if we go to the Tools menu, select Options, then on the Document Properties tab, check the Unit setting. For this design, Millimeter is set. COMSOL also has a geometry unit setting. If we start to add a new geometry sequence, we can see that by default, the unit is meters. So the question is, what happens to the length unit during synchronization? I'll add a new live link node. Under the import options, we can see that the length unit is set from CAD document. This is the default and it means that the live link feature takes control of the unit setting of this geometry sequence. After synchronization, the unit becomes millimeter. With the other available setting, I can instead convert the CAD design to the unit used by COMSOL. First, I set the COMSOL geometry unit to meters, then make sure that the live link settings have the unit from COMSOL, then synchronize again. Now that we have sorted out the units, I am going to create a block to represent the mold around the steering wheel. 
I already know what the numbers are that we want for this. So I'll just enter them in here. And then we want the base to be in the center. Click build selected. Go to the default view. And then we can actually click on transparency so we can see inside the box. And here the geometry is fully inside the box. So that's just one way that you can use geometry from LiveLink for SolidWorks imported and create your own geometry in Comsol Multiphysics. Note that with LiveLink for SolidWorks, the Comsol Multiphysics interface is actually embedded in the SolidWorks user interface. You are able to model with Comsol Multiphysics within SolidWorks itself, albeit with slightly limited functionality.